Hi everybody, we are here on live and we think a real Kathleen watch. Yeah, I sent her an invitation. Connected. Yeah, it's her Instagram account is real Kathleen watch, and uh, and she she is connected. Hi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, we are ready to be here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Have you ever been in Belgium? I, you know, a long time ago, I think I was like five. We were there briefly. Um, so it was a long, long time ago. But I think like right before I got into acting, actually. So I, I need to get back when I'm allowed uh, to leave the U.S. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and you, did you like Belgium? Did you see the mannequin piece? We went through, um, we were in France, and I believe we took the train to Holland. So I remember eating um, delicious food on the train, and we stayed in a bed and breakfast, and that was my introduction to soft-boiled eggs that um, you eat with egg cups. So that's how I prefer eggs, actually, to this day, is from that trip. <laughs> okay, that's correct. But you visited <laughs> France, so that's great. Yeah, yes. Love it there. The last time I was in France was... Um, I think I was 25 or 26-ish, so recent Earth and um, other countries. So I think that was the last time I left the U.S. was to go to France. And now I'm... And <laughs> you don't speak French. Vous parlez pas français du tout. And, uh, I, I understand. I know how to speak food. That's, that's like my name. I can speak um, Spanish when it comes time to food and French when it comes time to like, I love frog's legs and foie gras and, and all kinds of... Um, Stick tartar, these, these things. I can speak these things. <laughs> ah, ok. Ben, c'est génial, alors. C'est génial. Donc, Kathleen uh, peut jouer dans un film français. I don't know. <laughs> you could, you could uh, speak, uh, you could act, sorry, in a French-speaking movie. I could. I, I, I could be like um, Ron Perl, or uh, was it, yeah, Ron Perlman in um, um, City of Lost Children. Have you seen that movie? It's a uh, good one. Which one? City of Lost Children is at least what it was called in the States. Um, it's the same director who did Amelie. Um, there was oh. a, a director duo that did it. But he's an uh, American actor, but he speaks just a little bit of French in the movie. So I can do that. If there's written lines, no problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, did you want to be an actress when you were young? Yes. Um, okay. I was... Actually, my idea, uh, I started acting my, um, the short version, my, my dad is a producer, um, so he was working on a music video, and I think I was about three years old, something like that, and they needed a little girl to chase a hula hoop for a Carlos uh, Santana music video um, in heaven. Uh, and so they needed a little girl, and I happened to be a little girl, so I got to chase the hula hoop, and um I had so much fun doing it. And I told my mom, I want to do this. And um, I always was playing pretend in the um, backyard and putting on plays for family members for um, like various gatherings at the house. I'd get everyone together and put on these shows for everybody. And um, it just, it something I, I don't even know how I knew what it was. I just kind of, the minute I, I could like have a conversation, I was like, I want to be an actor. <laughs> Okay, and um, you remember you acted in a Walt Disney clip, you know, in the beach in yes. 1995. Yeah, crazy. It feels like a hundred million years ago. In 1995, we made a movie for Mickey Mouse. That's um, correct. And you were... Yes, I was in it. That is correct. I was um, five years old, I believe, when we made that, six years old. Um, and that was, uh, we filmed that in Florida. So that was my first time experiencing uh, Epcot and uh, Walt Disney World. Um, since I'm an LA girl, I grew up with Disneyland. So that was like, I, I knew that world, but I got to experience Florida. Um, and I actually, I've been meaning to get back ever since because I feel like I would have a different experience um, now that I'm in my 30s. <laughs> okay. At Disney World. <laughs> Uh, you did visit uh, the Walt Disney uh, Disneyland Paris? No, I haven't been to uh, Disneyland Paris. 
and I really want to. And, that, and also, I want to go to um, the one that's in Japan. I feel like that would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. And you did also act in uh, the Fresh Prince Bel Air uh, with Will Smith. Yes. I don't know the name in English, but in French, it's Le Prince de Bel Air. I like that. Le Prince de Bel Air. <laughs> yes, yes, that's correct. The, the French uh, is much more exciting. <laughs> um, but yes, that, the Fresh Prince, that was how I got my SAG card, actually. So I got into the Actors Union all the way in 1994, I think it was, 95. Um, that one, we were in, a, um, in front of a live studio audience. So when I was, you know, very small, it was so exciting to hear the people right there laughing and, and enjoying the show with us so that was definitely a uh, a different experience but i think that's part of why i really love improv now and, and connecting with the audience that it kind of takes me back to that time <laughs> wow that's amazing uh, i was not a big fan of will smith's and his shows but uh, it was broadcasted <laughs> on belgium so one of your first experience was broadcasting in Belgium, so that's correct. That's cool. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. I make it all over the world, right? <laughs> that's correct. And then uh, you did so many movies with dogs. My God, there was one with uh, a dog. I don't know the name. Shallow, the second mm -hmm. one, uh, and Airbud, Airbud three, yep. and Airbud the reboot one. But I watched yep. uh, Airbud movie, the first one. You know when he is playing, he was playing basketball. Yes, the original. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then there was many movies with Air uh Soccer, the second one is about soccer, if I remember. And then there was the family and everything. I think there was 10 or 15 movies of Air Bud. They have a whole, there's like a, a, a genre within now of the Air Puppies. And the, they, I guess, like they talk to each other now or something, which is so cute. And then there was the... Um, yeah, they, they had like a, without Buddy, it's now it's just, it's his children have taken on their legacy. <laughs> yeah, and it's like Beethoven, you know Beethoven, the dog. Yes, I love Beethoven. <laughs> there was the first movie and then there is many things, the cartoon one and everything. Yeah, I love when, when and people I think realize Air... like, it's like animals, so we just keep going. <laughs> yeah, and I think Airbud is similar to Beethoven, yeah. It's the same yeah. way with dogs. Yes. And uh, it's, it's funny because we talk about the Fresh Air Prince and you played a girl named Penny and you <laughs> became another Penny because you acted in uh, Inspector Gadget, the second one, and mm -hmm. you were Penny. In French, the character name is Sophie. I, I, prefer, like Sophie, <laughs> I prefer Sophie than, uh, than uh, Penny. I think it's, it's cool. And uh, you acted in Inspector Gadget. I, I, am a, I was, when I was younger, still know a bit but i am a big fan of inspector gadget because it's a french creation the yes. creator is jean chalopin i think he's living now in japan uh, and um, yeah he made a, a cartoon he wrote some book and then in the usa they adapt the the french things to yes. two movies <laughs> but as i told you you were the perfect sophie because you look alike the character in the first movie uh, it was nothing to do with the cartoons, and the second one is uh, next close to the to the to the original concept of Jean Chopin. So yes. tell me about uh, Inspector Gadget too. Uh, is it a good experience? Did you meet Jean Chalopin? Was it on set and uh, everything? Ah uh, yes. Yeah, so I I wish I could have uh, met Jean. He was not a part of our um, production, but he was close with us because actually our director, whose name is Alex Zam real name um he wanted it to be a closer adaptation to the cartoon um and it's funny but i actually auditioned for the first inspector gadget movie but at that time i was a i think i was a little too young um so it went to michelle trachtenberg but when i auditioned i said you know i love the original cartoon it's one of my favorite shows and, and my mom happened to work at deke uh the animation studio that was um behind um Inspector Gadget and many other awesome fun cartoons from the 80s. <laughs> so she actually, when they closed down that office, she was able to take home a bunch of cells, which are like what they use for animation, the, the clear 
that they lay over backgrounds. So we gave those as gifts at the end of the movie. So I, I gave one to um, French Stewart, who is our uh, gadget, and um, Elaine Hendricks, who is uh, G2, and um, of course also Alex Zam, director and writer. Um, but we had a lot of fun. We were in Australia for that movie. So we were there for uh, almost three months. Uh, so I kind of got to relocate um, and live there, which was really um, exciting to me. I didn't really know anything about Australia. I was uh, 11 years old. I kind of knew like um, the the Crocodile Dundee and uh, uh, Steve Irwin. Those were like my only really, uh, oh, of course, uh, The Rescuers Down Under, one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. That was my knowledge of Australia. So when we got there, uh, we were in the jungle portion of um, Australia. So most people think of like, you know, desert and dry, but we were in this lush, um, they call it Queensland. So it was all very beautiful and right by the beach and got to go to the Great Barrier Reef and really um, kind of enjoy this different upside down world from where uh, I'm used to. But we really wanted to have the same feeling as the cartoon where gadgets just always on the case that the wrong gadgets come out when he's wanting his gyrocopter or bubblegum when he needs to have uh, his skateboard. So when we had the big explosion scene, um, we had so much fun with the green screen and then filming the um, the plates is what they call it. So it's like what, what they are gonna put over the green screen. So I got to be a little bit of a part of that, which um, as an 11 year old was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, but congratulations again, because you were the perfect Sophie. I was Thank very <laughs> sad about the first one because I think she had red hair And I said, what the fuck? Because in the yeah. cartoon, she has brown hair. So for me, yeah, it's important. Yeah, the pigtails, always. <laughs> And you are, you are like Sophie. You really look alike <laughs> the Sophie cartoon. So Thank it's you. amazing. Uh, it's, it's similar for me. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, did you watch the first movie? I did. I Actually, I, I remember seeing it um, on the old VHS from Blockbuster after it came out. Um, And I remember the song at the end was the, that was like the most exciting part, I think, to me of the movie. And I love Matthew Broderick. I think he's a brilliant actor, but I don't think he's my gadget. I think French Stewart was pretty awesome as a gadget. I was a big fan of um, Third Rock from the Sun um, sitcom from the 90s. Uh, and actually French was my favorite character because he was just like this weird alien person. <laughs> um, and so when I got to uh, first meet him, we were actually in the um, airport uh, lobby, like lounge area because we got to fly first class, which was very exciting. So we saw him sitting over in the corner and um, I was like, mom, I think that's French Stewart. So I kind of went over to him and was like, hey, Uncle Gadget. Penny, and he was like, oh my God, hard. So that was how we first uh, introduced each other, but it was very exciting. I feel like I had known him like my whole life when I met him. <laughs> you, uh, there is a paper we say you are a great actress. You play the role of Sophie too well. So I'm not alone. Everybody <laughs> think it. But really, you Thank are you. brilliant. You are brilliant, Sophie, in the show. And I was a bit uh, in the second movie. I, I, I had some deception. Because I prefer the first Aspector Gadget than the second ah. one. According <laughs> to me, the second one is uh, too proud of himself. You know, he's all the time, yeah, I am Gadget, I am Gadget. I didn't <laughs> like it because in the cartoon, uh, Aspector Gadget is a bit crazy. He's in his own world. And Sophie yeah. helped him all the time. And he, <laughs> he didn't know that Sophie and the dog helped him uh, in his back. And I really yeah. love the cartoon because uh, Gadget is a bit stupid. He, he is a tête en l'air in French and uh, <laughs> like this. And um, yeah, uh, there was some good things in the second one. But unfortunately, uh, yeah. Um, Uh, the proper um, adaptation, I don't think, has really happened yet because I feel also in our our sequel, we were trying to kind of keep it a little similar to the first one because we didn't want it to be completely new. Um, but I feel that you know maybe maybe that's uh, in the the newer one that they'll be making of it, it'll be closer to uh, what we both want to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, I really love the idea of the gadget woman. It was very yeah. Nice. 
I really love that. And I don't know if you know, but later, um, she's the reason for everyone to watch Inspector Gadget 2. Yes, I think that's correct. Because you are <laughs> the real Sophie, according for me. Because in Belgium, yeah. I don't know if you know, but you have Tintin in Belgium. I like that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there was a movie about Tintin, and they found the guy in the beach, and oh. a producer said, oh, you look like Tintin. Do you want to act Tintin in the movie? And the <laughs> boy said yes, and he was really look alike Tintin, and yeah. it's exactly the same with Sophie. According to me, you are the Sophie look alike right now. You are Sophie. <laughs> but uh, uh, to 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 back to to go back in my uh, conversation, I don't know if you know, but for Inspector Gadget, there was a new series, and there was the Gadget Tinis. You know oh, the tiny gadget. Know. No. Uh -huh. So in the new aware. season, in the cartoon, in the new season, there is the 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 little gadgets. There is two kids. Who are the, the, the gadget kids? Oh, the gadget kids. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. In French, it's gadget tinis. The gadget, the tiny gadget, the gadget tinis. The tiny gadget. <laughs> the petit gadget, exactement. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, 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 I really love this. Uh, yeah, Fino is a real dog in the movie and in the cartoon, uh, he's very like a human, you know, he could, yeah. go, he could, he could communicate. I, I was hoping that they were going to go a little that way with ours, but um, technology, I don't think, had made it to make it look um, too believable without being too ridiculous, you know? And according to the first gadget, it was really great to explain the story of gadget because uh, in the cartoon, we don't have the explanation. Yeah. So accor the according origin. to... <laughs> Yeah, according to me, the first gadget is a bit like Spider-Man, the first movie of Ang Lee, because we explain how it become, uh, how he became, sorry, gadget, and the bad guy. Oh, the bad guy became uh, the evil man, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So we knew everything about the story that is not telling in the in yeah. the books and in the cartoon. So I really love the Bible, the Bible <laughs> origins of Inspector Gadget, and then the second one. Uh, it was funny because the evil man has a white hat and we can see his face during all the movie. But we know who is mm -hmm. According to the first movie, we know his face. But in the second one, you can see his face because it's like the cartoon, you know, with the hand. Yeah. The cat. <laughs> That's what I always liked about the cartoon when you couldn't see Claw's face. He was more of a mystery. Um, so I think Alex Zam liked that too. So we kind of went that route um, with our, our bad guys. That was kind of entertaining because we were working actually in an old, um, I think it was a power plant that um, now is like they, they film stuff there. So we, it was kind of exciting when they built the bowling pin um, chair and we had uh, the bowling factory is what we were pretending it was. So there were like boxes of bowling shoes and randomly in Brisbane, Australia at the time that we were making the movie, bowling shoes became really popular. So it was like, actually the local news that the teenagers um, in the area were going to the bowling alleys and stealing bowling shoes. <laughs> so we had all these bowling shoes on the job and our um, costume person was having a really difficult time tracking down bowling shoes because there was like a shortage of bowling shoes at that time. <laughs> and you remember in the second movie, there is also the monkey. He comes in yes. a bar and there is a little monkey. <laughs> I just remember that, but yeah, yes, that was amazing. we had so fun. <laughs> yeah, and so I speak about Aspector Gadget because I read in the news that they will make a new movie about uh, Aspector Gadget. I don't know if yeah. you w would be in. I don't know what is about the Inspector Gadget three. You have no news. You you don't have information. You you will hack. I in. don't. Um, I mean, I maybe I can make an appearance as the mayor or something. But um, I, I um, you were actually the one to to inform me of that. So I'm excited um, that the the gadget legacy can continue. Um, I feel all generations should be into him. So I'm glad that they can make it reborn. But um, yeah, I'll have to make some phone calls and be like, hey, you know, um, need a penny? <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, they will make a new Spider-Man movie and it will be a crossover between the first one, the second one, and the new one. Uh, it will be very strange, you know, with... Uh, yeah. Ah, I forgot the name of the character, but I read that. And uh, there, w there will be Andrew Garfield 
Tobey Maguire and uh, ah Tom Holland. Yes. Yeah, so oh, they interesting. Will do, they will do a, a very crossover thing. So maybe they will do an inspector gadget with uh, yeah. the old Sophie. Sophie in the future, and it will be you. That would be fun. But, oh, I love that. But, I like that idea. But I, like the Spider Verse, but for uh, <laughs> gadget. But yeah, but I don't have any information about the movie. And uh, I don't know Jean Ch Charopin, so I don't know. The, the funny thing about Aspector Gadget, it's a Disney movie in uh, in mm -hmm. the USA. And uh, in, in Europe, it's not a, a Disney thing. Aspector uh, Gadget is not a Disney ah. thing. But, yeah, uh, just, the legal battles that they, they go through for the rights of certain movies and things like... Um, Now in the States, we finally have The Muppets Show. It's one of my favorites from the 70s. Um, Jim Henson's original show with them. And they just released it on Disney Plus uh, yesterday. But that was something that, like, to get the rights to the music and to have all of the um, rights in various countries to release it, I guess it took them, like, 20-some years to make it happen. So I'm excited, but I, I'm glad I don't have that job. I don't think I would be able to handle having to do all that paperwork and back and forth to get... The rights to something that you would think would just be like, yeah, of course, it's the show. Why can't you just play it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, we have a common thing. I love uh, the Muppet Show. I, uh, yeah. I, I got the old DVD and I really love Kermit the Frog. You know, I have an animal puppet, you know, animal, the ah, drummer. I, the love puppet, I have yay. a puppet. Yes. Yeah, I have the <laughs> puppet the here in my room. Uh, I can so show you, fun. but yeah. yeah, I have it. Uh, I really love Sesame Street, too. Uh, in fact, I am a big fan of puppets and of cartoons, yeah. comics, board dessinés, uh, everything. Have you seen um, the, uh, what is it called, Dark Crystal? The the new, they did a Netflix series of based off of the movie, but it's it's now, um, they made it, I think it's now like three, two, three years ago, but it's so beautiful. I really recommend it. If you like puppetry, um, they didn't use any CGI and it's all real puppets and practicals. So the, the movement and the backgrounds and all the little details is just beautiful. Yeah, there is a guy who said they just put the Muppet Show on Disney Plus, as you said. Uh, yeah. I, I don't have uh, Disney Plus, but uh, uh, yeah, I really love the Disney world, but I am more bored dessiné than uh, Disney, you know, as Asterix, <laughs> Lucky Luke, Marsupilami. Uh, but they are not really famous in the U.S., unfortunately. Uh, mm. uh, yes, you did a thing or so. I don't know the title, but you did a thing with a dolphin right right now. Please. Yes, um, I believe that was Beneath the Blue is what we called it yeah, here. <laughs> that's correct. Because uh, there, there was a period where you were uh, in some beach movies, you know. Yes. And I there was a movie the with... Beach, so maybe that was part of it? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I that you vibe, were... I guess. There is also a movie where you were with an actress, Alison Scariotti, Scariotti, and yes. Alison. So there Scariotto. is this movie. Yeah, yeah she acted in is... Drake and Josh. Yeah, and that that movie was called Endless Bummer, um, and we made that uh, in two thousand seven, I think. Two thousand seven was when we filmed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that when we were at um, the Ventura County um, beach area for most of it, and then for the final like two or three weeks of filming, we were um, night shoots in um, the valley in Los Angeles. So it was uh, super fun to go from beach all day, sunshine, and then nighttime uh, vampire yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah, you did many beach movies. It's typical mm -hmm. American, you know. You you acted also in Kids in America. Mm-hmm. That's right. Who is also um, a bit uh, a beach movie too? Uh, yes. Yeah, that that's great. I would like some beach movies in Belgium. You know, very cold beach because yeah. in the beach in Belgium it's very cold beach. You know, uh, it's not mm -hmm. like Playa. It's not Playa. It's not uh, Spain. It's not Ibiza. <laughs> but I would like some beach Belgian movie. Yeah, if a director yeah. listen me. You know, as Jonathan Zakai, I, Jonathan, it's a movie director and a movie actor in Belgium. He's watching at this moment, maybe. So <laughs> do a beach Belgian movie. He did a really great, amazing movie. It's uh, J.C. comme Jésus-Christ. Um, mm -hmm. ah, I forgot the English name of the movie. Um, Play it like Godard, yeah. The English title oh. is Play it like Godard. 
and the mm -hmm. movie in French it's J'y sais comme Jésus Christ. So J'y sais as Jésus Christ. It's a it's wow. a fake reality movie about uh -huh. a, a, a genius, a, a movie director with genius, and it's very funny, very great. Uh, very parodic. It's the parody of uh, the cinema middle in France. And oh, yeah. I really love this, yeah. So maybe a beach movie. But yeah, it was a good experience yeah. for you, uh, beach movies. And yeah, it was really great with surf boys, you know, and yeah. everything. <laughs> I, I grew up in Malibu. So I grew up, um, I went to surf when I was about 12 or so. And so that was one of my favorite things for a long time. Um, just being by the ocean just was always so calming so i feel in a way when i would see the movies of oh yeah i can definitely know how to do this um but i actually didn't learn how to swim um until i was about five because i um i had constructive surgery on my foot um because i was born knock kneed and pigeon toed so my my feet both faced inwards and the doctor said that if I, we didn't do this now that it could possibly be more club as i grew up so the surgery on my foot was like that summer that everyone learned how to swim and I was like terrified of water and I just had no interest and then when we moved from Santa Monica to Malibu closer to the ocean um, I took a surf class and I really got over my fear and learned how to dive under the wave and I became a much stronger swimmer um, and now swimming is like my my favorite thing I, I love being able to do laps and just like not think and just the quiet calm that happens when you're underwater there's nothing quite like it So when we did um, Beneath the Blue, I got the script and, you know, dolphin movie in the Bahamas, like, yes, please. <laughs> so when we were there, I got to um, really experience being with the dolphins before we filmed to kind of make sure that um, I was bonding kind of the same way we do with dogs. Actually, it was a very similar experience. Um, and one of the dolphins, um, his name is Stripes. He really liked me. So that was the dolphin that they would say, go with, and he'd like a dog and he would follow me. Um, so that was the most magical thing just to be able to touch him. And he would come over and just kind of check me out when we were underwater. And it was just magical. They, oh. I, they make these little noises when they're next to you, like this kind of clicking sound. And that's part of their sonar. So they're actually seeing in your body 3D. So they can see like if um, something's wrong or if you're um, pushing yourself, they, they know. So when we were first doing the free dive where you, you know, you're swimming down, no um, air tank or anything, um, my ears started to hurt. And I just thought, oh, you just push through it, you know, whatever, no pain, no gain, right? Um, and I'm, I was pushing and pushing and then Stripes swam underneath me and then he swam up to the surface really fast. So I got stuck in his um, like current that he made and I floated to the surface kind of confused and the dolphin trainer was like were you clearing your ears when you were going down and I was like no and he goes yeah the dolphins don't like that he could see that you were going to burst your ear drum you can't do that and I was like wait he just saved my life <laughs> wow yeah, I think the dolphins are really uh, uh, nice really uh, empathic empathic you know yeah. they are very they are born to be good That's that's yeah. amazing. They are born to be good. Uh, they were born, sorry, they were born to be good. Uh, it's a normal word, sorry for the votes. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I love them. I saw them, I saw a dolphin show in the Asterix Park, and I really love the dolphin show, you know, with the trainers, and they are jumping yeah. in the street, and the folk, there, there is also the folk. Uh, for mm -hmm. the fuck, I don't know the name. In <laughs> I'm not saying any bad words. Huh? It's the fuck, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, to uh, me it sounds like folk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The fuck, the fuck, uh, and Otari too. And yeah, I really love the the C word. Yeah, yeah, so, great. And uh, you also acted in a Profiler, a TV series. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was kind of like the first um, CSI kind of show because they didn't have really That's... those. Correct. style shows then <laughs> and, be and before criminal minds before criminal minds yeah it's funny because i got into criminal minds i actually am, i'm totally a um true crime junkie i love all of those true crime documentaries don't fuck with cats I just i just watched it and then well my god i'm still recovering um, i love that stuff but i blame it from 
being on that show when I was, um, I think I was six when we made that pilot and um, I eventually left the show when I was eight. Um, but the props department was always so exciting because they had all the fake blood and the fake dead bodies. And they always had like, there was the character of Jack was this serial killer stalker who was stalking my character's mother, Samantha Waters. And um, so they had to like write ransom letters with like a little, you know, cutting out um, the letters from different magazines. And it was just like doll, Barbie doll heads on pins, just like really weird stuff. But I really had fun um, on that show, uh, despite it being definitely not like for anyone by age. <laughs> but um, the first time I watched a CSI, uh, or sorry, a Criminal Minds episode, I was like, wait a minute, this is the profiler. Like they are literally profilers going in and profiling serial killers. <laughs> we did that already. But I still really love the show. <laughs> Reed is my favorite character, obviously. <laughs> I, I saw that in 2010, there was a hole between uh, the, the, the last movie, the latest movie in 2010, and then you come back in acting with uh, the Hungover game of directed yes. by George Stolberg. <laughs> and, uh, My favorite George fact, Stolberg. <laughs> yeah, in fact, that's amazing because I watched this movie on DVD and I didn't recognize you, in fact, and I say, wow. The, the girl who acted the zombie, the movie, is very funny. Who is she? And then I see, it's getting much. But I didn't recognize you because you are so different. It's a very yeah. trashy role. And it was not... Hard to recognize, covered of... in blood. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's correct. You were so funny. I saw, uh, I saw also the, um, the making of with George and everybody. And you are speaking with Tara, 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 ah, Tara Red. Yes, she acted also in the movie, and uh, yes. yeah, they explain everything with the makeup department. And uh, I saw that you had so many funds to act this role. It is your last, your last work uh, acting. Yes, you asked that. I hope you could come back. You had a, sorry, <laughs> the yeah, in the, in French, it's the last. Okay, when you say oh, c'est son dernier album. C'est son dernier, mais it means the last. But in uh, America, in, in the US, the last is when you are dead, and the latest yeah. is when uh, you are still living, in fact. But yeah, for it's, us it's in French, yeah, for <laughs> us in French, it's the same word, okay? It's le dernier. But it doesn't mean <laughs> you are dead, hein? it just means the, le dernier. Yeah, I'm not dead yet. Oh, bon. <laughs> and so yeah, uh, you did. You did some, f you have, you had, sorry, you had some fun with the Hangover game, a crossover between the Hangover, very bad trip in French, and um, <laughs> the the Hunger Games. Yeah. Yes. All these, uh, and these are great words for um, a language that doesn't have a ha huh sound. So there you go, no, perfect. <laughs> I like, I like it though. Um, actually, I randomly, I studied accents in college. Um, that was one of my majors, believe it or not. I went to USC and I studied the theater. So that was why there was a gap um, in my resume, if you will, of movie time. Um, but that was one of my emphasis. And actually, um, French is uh, one of the ones that I uh, prefer. I think it is a much more interesting uh, sound to do. <laughs> and you did also some producing work, I see. You were a production assistant or is it not you? Yes, I, I actually have got into production. So now I um, work on the other side of the camera. Um, so I did some PA work, uh, production assistant, and now I am a coordinator for commercials. So um, it's certainly not as glamorous as being in front of the camera, but my life is making sure that um, everybody knows where to be and at what time and coordinating schedules and needs and demands um, for a cast and crew. Um, yeah, making sure that like people drink water on set. And I mean, sometimes I kind of feel like I'm like the set mom, if you will, of like, do you have sunblock on? When, you know, do you use the bathroom? <laughs> I have to remind people sometimes how to take care of themselves. That's my job. Making maps and little things like that. So yeah, that's a, uh, Kind of fell into that um and i really do enjoy it and i, I kind of was getting into being an ad for a while um the assistant director so 
kind of um, kitten wrangling is, is one way to describe it, where once you get one kitten in the basket, then like five more have left the basket and you're like, no, come back, come back. And then that one kitten gets out of the basket and I have no kittens in the basket. It's a normal day on set. <laughs> And uh, you did also uh, some production work on the music video of 30 Seconds to Mars, mm -hmm. the music band. Yes. That was um, City of Angels. Beautiful song, actually. I really liked the, um, the message of it because uh, as an L.A. native, I, I actually really appreciated the light that they shone on kind of the diversity of um, what it means to be in the City of Angels. <laughs> And uh, did you act in a, in a music video? I did act in um, the Carlos Santana music video from like 1992 or 93. Um, but outside of that, I uh, have not been... Actually, no, I am seen... There's a clip uh, in City of Angels where they're driving in a car and I am ducking into an alleyway. You can see me trying not to be seen on camera. <laughs> So I am in that music video briefly, but it, it was an unintentional cameo. <laughs> okay. And uh, you work also in uh, Swedish Dicks as a production. Yes. I worked uh, in the AD department on that one. So it was very fun. Actually, randomly, um, Tracy Lords was a reoccurring character on the show. Uh, and she was... A reoccurring character on The Profiler. She played the serial killer Jack, who was stalking my character's mother. Um, she was his girlfriend. I think they maybe even had a, like a marriage that happened on the show. I'm kind of, forgive me, it's been a while since I've seen it. And uh, I was also very young when we were making it, but we never had any scenes together. But I do remember like kind of knowing that she was a part of our show but not really knowing anything about the history of Tracy Lords until I was much older and was like, wait a minute, what? That's crazy. Um, for those of you who don't know, she was a porn actress, but she was underage. So when she turned 18, she was like, hey, actually this whole time I've been underage and all of those movies are now considered child pornography. So they had to destroy all her films. Uh, and I think only one film was made that she was over 18 that she produced and may have even directed. So anyway, she was one badass chick, um, but I didn't know any of this until like way later. Um, so when we were doing Swedish Dicks, she was there and I'm like, hey, totally random. Don't even know if you remember me. And she's like, wait, were you on the profiler before I could even finish my sentence? And I was like, yes, I was. So that was kind of fun to be reunited with her. And then in one of the episodes, we had a character. Um, she, I think she was their boss or I can't actually remember what her purpose was on Swedish Dicks, but she was my baseball coach in the Air Bud movies. So oh. it was also very exciting to reunite with her. <laughs> That's amazing. And do you <laughs> like to sing? I love singing, yes. Have you ever uh, sing for a, a movie or a, a theater, a, a stage, a stage thing? Yes. Or, yeah. All of the above, actually. Um, I did a bunch of children's uh, productions when I was a kid doing singing. So we did um, Fiddler on the Roof, West Side Story. I played Maria, which was very fun. Um, and we did uh, Cats and a couple others. But then for um, Family Affair, which was a TV show on the WB before they changed it to the CW, um, where I played uh, guitar and sang on that one for in a few episodes. And um, I went to the very uh, the final auditions, um, just like very long, I think there was like a month worth of audition for uh, Annie when they did the live, or sorry, when they made the remake of it for ABC uh, Movie of the Week. So that was an experience. I didn't end up getting the job, but um, we were learning different um, Uh, choreography and just having to do sing along with the piano so it was very fun um an interesting experience i felt like i was in a chorus line the whole time the, the broadway show <laughs> uh, you never release a, a, a singer a 45 lp uh, an album no i never did that um i i you know after Lindsay lohan had her breakout with um rumors i was like i mean how do you how do you follow that that's just i love i love rumors it's still one of my favorite songs i go back and listen to it all the time um but anyway 
I do um, still continue to dabble in guitar playing. Um, and my dad is actually a really fantastic, brilliant singer songwriter, folk musician. So every now and then I sing with my dad. Um, actually, I think on my channel, I have a few um, videos I have posted of us together. Yeah, um, that's correct. Playing. I saw them. Yeah, yeah. So we have fun with it. It's um, not something that I've ever really um, pursued, but I, I feel, you know, these days it's something maybe I should get back to. Why not? <laughs> and uh, would you like one day to direct a movie or short movie? Uh, Absolutely. Like um, I personally, um, I love what it means to make a film. So everything about movies and TV shows and, and just the um, psychology of how to explain something to other people that it comes like from within your brain. I think that is um, magic in, in a lot of ways. Um, so to me, like, um, I've always had the alongside saying I've always wanted to be an actress since I was very small. I also always wanted to be a director. Um, and I remember someone asking me what's a director. And when I was very small, I think I was about like four, um, five, I said, they're the architect who uh, designs the story. And I think that is true to this day. So that is something that um, one day I hope to be able to parlay my acting experiences into directing Um, and I did while I was in college, um, I studied also directing um, and acting and really the different ways to approach characters because I'm someone that naturally, um, when I put the character on, I try to kind of in imagine what was their, what's their earliest memory and what's their favorite smell and just like these little random things that I just always think about as myself and what other people might be thinking. But then when I went to school, I learned that that's not necessarily normal. That's not necessarily how everybody is. So kind of learning the different ways to explain to somebody, like, be happy. You know, that's like not really a very helpful direction. But if you say you feel really joyful that you're finally being reunited with your long lost father, there's a different kind of um, emotion that that can come out with besides like, be happy, you know? <laughs> And uh, do you also write some things, uh, some stories, novels, shorts, short films? I do. Uh... I, um, I hope it's so fun, but I, um, I got into doing um, improv and stand-up, so I have all these um, routines, bits, if you will, that I have written um, that I've been, you know, I was waiting, 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 and kind of just starting to go to open mics when the whole COVID thing happened, and now it's completely shifted and I got a little um, nervous and afraid of the idea of doing stand-up on Zoom where you don't really have an audience. And so now I'm kind of pulling myself back together of like, okay, this is now normal. So I have to adapt. Um, but I also have been reading this really fantastic um, book series. It's called Golden Mountain Chronicles. Um, and basically it's about, um, uh, it takes place from the 1800s all the way until um, like early 2000s. So there, every book is like a different time period, but it follows these uh, various families that are from China who make their way to the United States through San Francisco. So it's um, kind of a, the Chinese American experience, something I'm really obviously know nothing about. Um, but through these books, I feel like I'm learning something new not only about Chinese culture, but about myself. And I think that it's a beautiful series that I would love to see as maybe even an animated film uh, or some kind of um, movie uh, that's live action with animation or something. So as I'm reading it, I'm being inspired. So hopefully, maybe soon, there will be uh, more information on that. <laughs> And uh, have you ever dubbed uh, 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 an actor or an animated character? That is an awesome question. Um, so uh, have you ever seen the movie Chocolat or Chocolate <laughs> with Johnny Chocolat, Depp? Chocolat, the movie with Omar Sy? Yes. So I auditioned and went to the finals to play uh, the daughter in that. Um, and I almost, almost got it. And then they decided they wanted a real French actress, which understandable. And I was very disappointed, but, you know, fine. They made the movie and then they came back to me uh, after they filmed it and they said, we actually can't understand what she's saying. So we want, um, would you be interested in dubbing her voice? And I was 
it's like 10 years old. And I was so heartbroken that I didn't get the movie that I was like, no, I don't want to dub someone's voice. That's just, you should have hired me in the first place. Um, so I passed on that and they ended up getting a French Canadian girl to uh, do the dub, which I thought was kind of like, Ooh. I wonder how the, the French actress felt about this. Um, but anyway, uh, my godfather, um, Kevin Altieri, who I adore and always um, boast about, he created Batman the Animated Series in the 90s. Um, he's had me um, a few times do just like some small little voice uh, voiceover stuff for him, but nothing nothing for the actual uh, show or anything like that. But um, I do hope to get into voiceover next. That's uh, a frontier that as someone who loves cartoons and I grew up on Bugs Bunny and all the original um, Silly Symphonies and all that, I think cartoons are, um, there's so much more than just like bright colors for little kids to watch. Like there's there's so many things that like, I'll be watching going like My Little Pony even, where I'm like, this is not for children. This is hitting really deep for me right now. So I, was, I need this. Thank you, Rainbow Dash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do the. That's the, what I sound like. <laughs> and I can do also the chipmunks, you know. I'm missing an enemy, I'm missing an enemy, I'm missing an enemy, I'm missing you know. You know, something like this, yeah. I really love changing my voice to speak like a girl, and yeah, I really love <laughs> ac voice acting, yeah. With the radio thing, it's amazing to change oh, voice. Oh, yeah. You're good, yeah, you're good, try it, you know, like like the the Papa Smurf, you know. Oh, yeah. Papa Smurf, Smurf. <laughs> you know, something like this. Yeah, I really love, I love this. Yeah, yeah, that's good old great. man. <laughs> and uh, what are you doing right now? Uh, so it's the COVID, so everybody is quarantined in the USA, of course. But uh, before the COVID, what did you do and what would you like to do? Well, um, before the COVID, I, um, I was actually just making the transition of uh, roommates in my apartment. And so I just bought my first couch and I was so excited. Uh, and then once COVID hit, my roommate that was moving in had to move to Connecticut uh, back home with her folks. So I ended up having to put all my stuff in storage, my brand new couch back in, in storage. Um, and I moved in with my folks, my own folks, um, who had just made the shift to um, Northern California from Malibu. So um, I've actually been living with them now for a year, which is crazy. Um, and I really appreciate being there. They're more in the country. So I'm not in the city, which feels really nice. I'm sure you can probably hear the uh, tractors and stuff that are around here. Um, but I was uh, working in production. I was actually in the middle of uh, two simultaneous commercials when it all went to crap um but since then i've i've been working um in doing commercials uh in the production side of things i'm actually right now in the middle of a production so keeping myself busy but i would love to once i'm allowed to um i would just really like to travel um my grandfather just turned uh 98 which is crazy Whoa. uh and he lives up in oregon so i would love to start just by going and saying hi to him um I mean, he made it to 98 and he's going, now I'm not going to, COVID's not going to be the thing to take me out. And I don't want to be the thing to give him the COVID. So uh, once I know that it's safe and, um, you know, I can get the uh, vaccine and, and kind of try to build, build a life back together, I'd love to be able to like go camping and just kind of like go to some of, um, I've never been to the Grand Canyon and there are a couple of just like random places in the States that I'm like, you know, Maybe I'll maybe I'll just do a little uh, uh, car camping journey and go to all the places and just you know click those boxes of places that I've always wanted to go and now uh, in Belgium it's like rethinking it yes and then I'll come to Belgium <laughs> okay you should come in Belgium you will see there is some fun and uh, do you you, you 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 told me uh, in the message you wrote me you told me that your mother actually work on Inspector Gadget as we said in the animated uh, uh, series and your godfather worked in Batman in the Batman series that's correct okay mm -hmm. so do you like uh, comics uh, I know when I you do. say comics well, when you say comics in the USA it's all the time Marvel DC but when you say to an European uh, comics, 
he would tell you uh, Lucky Luke, you know, maybe Garfield, Snoopy, and it's, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mom, because it, there, there is not all the time superhero comics things in the USA. Yeah. But uh, they are very popular with the cinema, with Hulk, uh, Captain America, and everything. But uh, yeah. do you know some European comics, you know, like uh, Asterix, Tintin? Um, I love Tintin. Um, I actually, I watched the show of that one. Um, I, I have not read the comic itself, though. Um, the show, the, good... show, the show, it's the series. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, was he, in, the, in, the preview, in, the, in the previews music, there is he's, uh, running, you know, in, the, in a black circle. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the TV series because Spielberg made a movie, an animated mm -hmm. movie. Yeah, so I remember the, that So there one. is the twice. Yeah. So you know Tintin. <laughs> I know Tintin. I know the, the, the show. I always liked his little flip on his hair that, where he had yeah. his spent special hair. Um, but I love Neil Gaiman. He's like my hero. So I really love the Sandman um, stories. And I've read Watchmen a few times now. Um, I was given actually like the full um, book of that from a friend that I worked with um, when I was interning at Ben Stiller's production company. So I I go to, I revisit that one every now and then. Um, and what else? Do, um, do you know the Smurfs? Yes. Oh, yes. And I love the Snorks, personally. I was, a, I was more it's of a Snorks. From yeah. It's from oh, Belgium. It's from Belgium. You didn't that. know that. I did not know that. It's That's a Belgian awesome. guy who created the, the Smurf. And oh. uh, you, you don't know Spirou? Spirou and Fantasio? Mm, I don't think so. Um, Marsupilami. Hmm, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Marsupilami, it's an uh, animal. It was produced in, by Disney in the USA. So Disney produced a TV series with uh, a oh. monkey. There was a monkey and Marsupilami. <laughs> it's a uh, it's, uh, uh, black and yellow animal. And he mm -hmm. all the time saying, Uba, 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 <laughs> Uba, Uba. And he could, he could uh, with his cue, he could make a, a ball and then he hit the the the, the bad the bad people pop, pop. like a, a box a box thing you know and it's the yeah. marsupilami and uh, what else Lucky Luke do you know the cowboy Lucky Luke it's a western it sounds familiar I feel maybe Anna, Anna, ba Anna Barbara produced a TV series in the USA oh, okay yeah and I do you know an odd an odd American comics do you know a uh, Red Reader Red Rider, you know? No. Yes, 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 yeah. With yes, with the Rider, yes. yes, with the the little Indian. He has a Indian, an Indian. Um, ah, I forgot the name. Little Beaver. Oh, um... Little Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> petit raton, il me semble. Raton, petit raton en français. And uh, yeah, yeah, I love Red Reader. Yeah, it's a very old comics. Yeah, yeah. in the USA. And there was some yeah. black and white movies. At the time, I didn't see them, but I know the information. Yeah, yeah. I know it's fun when you go down the rabbit hole of all the like things you can have uh, knowledge and interest in. I, I love that about the internet too. Of like when you're going, I want to learn more about like I just recently learned Native American blues is a is a beautiful thing that I I love music. I love the blues. Never heard of it. And now I have a new thing to get into. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Uh, I really love music. You know, I, I collect the 45 LP and 33 oh, very LP. Cool. And I really yeah. love the, you know, the old stuff like the Beatles, the Rolling Stone, yeah. you know, the Yardbirds, yeah. the yeah. Birds, the Beach Boys, uh, yeah. you know, you know that, uh, the Led Zeppelin, the Who, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, and I really love the sleeve, you know, the, the illustrated sleeves, yeah. you know, the like the... Yeah, yeah, like the comics thing, you know, there, there was some Popeye mm -hmm. also, Popeye, uh, Popeye uh, LP, there was uh, Mad, Mad, you know, Mad, yeah. um, the, the comics magazine Mad, you know, there was some yeah, LP yeah. of Mad, uh, there is many, many things, you know, Mandrake, Mandrake also. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the Big Magic Brother and the Holding Company, one of the albums that had all the comic on the front, that's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> yeah, I really love this too, yeah, I really love this too. And uh, yeah, I collect that. Yeah, I am a really big fan of uh, LP, 
I have like yeah. 3,000 LP at home. Uh, yeah, wow, TV. that's awesome. Congratulations. That's not an yeah, easy thing to, to get. <laughs> yeah, but I really love to collect, you know, it's important for me to, to have my yeah. own personal thing, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. I just share it. I think I will buy, I will, I will create a museum in the future to share everything I get in my one lifetime. But yeah, yes. I really love this. And I really love watching movies, speaking with actors about their acting, their acting career. Love yeah. speaking languages too, but I don't speak Spanish. Yeah. I speak Dutch, French, German, and uh, English. And yeah, so I really awesome. love it. <laughs> yeah. so cool. Yeah. I can barely speak but, English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I really love this. Yeah, I really love, you know, uh, we spoke about that in the interview, but I really love the worldwide thing, you know, because when you are yeah. in Poland, in Russia, in Japan, in China, uh, in Africa, it's all the time different. There is different comics, there is different movie, there is different backgrounds. Yeah. And, different uh, you culture, could, yeah, yeah. You could explore the, the different culture and in all over the world and you could discover some great things. And yeah. uh, that's correct. There is not, all, there is not everything on the web. Because sometimes yeah. you, you can fi you cannot find a thing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah. So you can uh, you couldn't get it. Yeah, sometimes I put some things on the internet and I can't find what I am looking for because at yeah. the time it was not internet. So <laughs> you need to search. Feelings. When you, yeah, when you yeah, find yeah, yeah. the one thing the internet doesn't have, it's like ha. Ah! There it is. I can feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, but I will tell you by uh, email or, or, or Facebook or Instagram. But I, I can tell it uh, to everybody. So I I, 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 I bought something very great, and it was not on the web, and it's according Elvis Presley. But I can tell it because uh, it's it's too much. It's a too much information. Wow. But yeah, I will wow. I will tell you uh, in private. But uh, yeah. so I hope you will uh, react in the movie because uh, yes. I really love your your acting uh, career. You. Yeah, you were really brilliant. You know, you 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 ah, you share something really great for my generation in Belgium. You know, when we were kids, I I was born on eleventh August nineteen ninety two. We we kids of the nineteenth. We are the kids of the nineties, and we bought the VHS. And uh, yeah. when we watched some uh, some movies for so so t uh, sorry some teen movies, you were in. in. So in Belgium, uh, we have uh, we have not really love, but we have uh, compassion for you. You know. Uh, yeah. It, it's, you are in our memory, in our brain, yeah. and uh, that's really great to, to to speak with you, to interview you, because you were so um, present in our in our youth age. That it's great, you know. You you didn't Thank change you. at all, and uh, you, <laughs> you were a really great actress. And for me, you are the real, the true Sophie. So, as a Thank as you. a big I guess Spectre gadget fan, it's really great. That's love so from awesome. India. There is a, a person from India. Love from wow. India. Wow, you, you are you're famous. I love this. <laughs> you're famous in India. But well, yeah, thank yeah, you that's so me. much, Roman. I really appreciate it. We'll have to maybe do another chat at some point. Yeah. Ooh. We lost the. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. We lost it, the uh, connection, but it's okay. So, yeah, we could do another chat uh, as you want. Yeah, uh, we'll figure some what... time out for sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. You, you, It's okay. You don't have any question. Everything is stolen. You, have a, you, you don't have a website to follow you on any social media? I medias? don't. Only, yeah, only the Instagram um, for now. But we'll, uh, we'll see how um, things progress. But for now, yeah, you can check me on there. Um, I'm going to be working, doing more uh, live streams, uh, check-ins since I was starting to do that in the beginning of COVID and kind of got out of it from getting lost in my work. But now I, I think I kind of find more balance in my life. So I'll hope to yeah. be reaching out more then. <laughs> yeah. And one more question. Uh, do you draw or you don't draw at all? I sketch every now and then. Um, my mom is actually an amazing artist, painter, potter, uh, sculptor, anything, everything. Um, so I've always 
stick figures um, and kind of boarding out uh, storyboards every now and then for ideas for movies. Um, so one day. Oh, we forgot the connection. Oops, we may have frozen again. There we go. Yeah, the connection. Is, yeah, the oh. connection is not really good. Caitlin. Well, if you can still hear me, I'll we'll get you next time, and we will uh, rendezvous again. Okay, rendezvous again if you want. But uh, yeah, yeah. The, the connection is uh, a bit bad, but uh, we spoke about everything, so it was very great. And uh, yeah. have a good day in California. You so... too. Have a good day in Belgium. I will see you soon. <laughs> yeah, it's Belgium. In Belgium, it's night. But yeah, we could reschedule something uh, in the future, in, in two weeks, something like this. And yeah, we could speak about so many things. Have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Oh, well, know, you have a good evening, I should say, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Uh-oh. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good day.